something had happened right there in the lobby. You just, you just saw that all the windows were blown out. The lobby looked like the plane hit the lobby. Later, they figure out that flaming jet fuel had shot straight down the elevator shaft. All of this damage was done already. People was all over the place. So you knew it was going to be worse when we got upstairs. Planes are shooting out. Smoke is pouring out. I want you to get an engine and see how you get an outside line. Walk to 7. I want you to go putting high in the 70. What do you want to do? My main concern was we had you know, 20 floors of people above. And we had to figure out a way to get them out. As it turned out, we had no usable elevators. With the elevators out, there was only one way to get up there. Walk. Companies come in. You see them with a concerned look on their face. And they're sent up. A firefighter in full gear, carrying 60-something pounds of hose and equipment, takes about a minute to climb one flight of stairs. These guys were looking at 80 stories just to get there. Then they'd start working. I felt the mood that we were going to put the fire out. Everyone seemed to be confident. I know I was. You basically looked at it and said, OK, we got 10, 20 stories of fire. You know, we'll deal with it. We'll get up there. You know, we'll, 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 we'll get to it. There are fire crews just screaming into this area from every conceivable direction. By this time, some of the top chiefs in the department had joined Chief Pfeiffer, running the command post, sending guys upstairs. Every time I looked around, it was new faces. Some that I, uh, I, I recognized. I had seen Chief Pronti, great guy, white hair, mustache, the perfect grandfather that you'd like to have. Remember seeing uh, Lieutenant Fody, who was uh, working with Nine Engine. Said hello and then started going up. Another of the men who went up was Lieutenant Kevin Pfeiffer. He was in charge of Engine 33, and he was the chief's brother. I just remember we both looked at each other, said a few words, and but it was more the look with a, a real concern that this was a, going to be something tough. It's going to be a tough job. It's going to be a long job. They'll put it out. That's what they do. The last time Jules had seen his brother was an hour ago at the firehouse. Far as Jules knew, Gideon had followed Tony, the probie, into the tower. When we had left for the order of gas in the street, for me, it was in the engine. And then when we arrived to the Trade Center, he went up immediately with the guys. So for me, my brother is going up the stairs. It turns out, Gideon was with Tony. Engine 7, ladder 1. This is Firefighter Benetata. But Tony was still at the firehouse. Yeah. No, I was off duty. And now he'd been ordered to stay there. Everybody's been recalled. All available units must come back to the firehouse. While Tony tried to keep up with the phones... This is Firefighter Benetata. Gideon took his camera and started walking down towards the Trade Center. He was sure his brother was inside, and he wanted to get to him. I remember uh, 
slowly walking down to the World Trade Center. What really stick in my mind is passing by the people and filming them and filming their astonishment. And the eyes saying, this is not happening. And you remember tilting the camera back and forth between the people and the tower in front of me. of the World Trade Center have been hit by aircraft. Both are in flames. There is uh, black smoke coming from both of the towers. Uh, it's uh, a horrific scene here. There's um, debris flying through the air. Right? Mayday. 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 There were two planes. I saw the second one hit. It hit the other tower. What we knew was that a second plane hit. And we had a lot of people trapped. Stay together. Stay together. Let me know what's going on. We're just going to have to walk in. One way to go. Second plane is with the motherfucking Now the Chiefs would have to set up a whole other operation over in Tower 2. I'm going to send him up. I get those people. Okay. the second plane is, that's when you could see fear. Both of them are on fire. You could see it in everybody's eye. There were people from all over the world in these streets. Different colors, different languages. On those few blocks between the Far House and the World Trade Center, the entire world was there. Two aircraft, two aircraft. The first one on one World Trade Center. The second one just happened. And they were all looking at the same thing and talking about the same thing and reacting the same way. You saw a plane going into the building. A plane went straight into the building. Right there, into the side. Yes, a plane. Yes, a plane. That was a direct hit. That was a huge one. That was a huge one. There were two planes. There's two. One of these buildings. Yeah, I saw the last one. We are boom in the whole building. What are those people going to do? On the second one? All the elevators are blocked out. Yeah. Well, the staircases might still be. No. Right? Stairs were crowded. People were coming down burnt. Upstairs in Tower One, the guys from my firehouse were now ten floors up and climbing. If we did talk, it was to the people coming down, trying to comfort them, tell them it's all right, get out, stay calm. I wound up finding a woman in the uh, C staircase. Her arms were all burnt. She was just sitting there, basically in shock. So I picked her up under her arms, and I put her in with a group of guys, and I asked the group of guys to, you know, take it down. I knew we had to get up to help people. We had to get up there. People pretty much said, why are y'all going up there? Get out. Their concern was to get everybody out. That was the key. As much people out as possible. Most of the people in Tower One came out on the mezzanine above the lobby. 
Then they'd get out through another building. All right, I want to use the lobby of seven as a tree act. The chiefs didn't want anyone going through the lobby door. First, it was because debris was falling outside. Then, it was people falling. You don't see it, but you know where it is. And you know that every time you hear that crashing sound, it's, it's a life, which is extinguished. It's not something you could get used to. And the 